Hello Stratters, it's Creepy V, and yes, I am back from the grave. Uh, I um, took a little break just because um, you know I had some personal health and um, just a few things going on in my personal life that I'm not going to really get into uh, that kind of took precedence and um, had to focus on that first before I could uh, get into making videos again but I very much have missed making videos for you guys uh, and I definitely want to get back into the swing of it as far as the regular um, like the frequency of my uploads I definitely don't expect to be going back to the two videos a week uh, right now my goal is to do one video a week and we'll see how consistently I can do that um, but now that the holidays have come around, today was actually my last day at work for the rest of the month, so I do have a little bit of time uh, before I'll be going to visit my family and whatnot that I can work on videos, so hopefully we can get some stuff out for you guys. Uh, so, the deck that we're going to be working with today, because we're going straight back into doing pauper stuff, I do have some other things in the works, but for right now, let's just stick with the tried and true pauper stuff got a pretty nice list from one of my friends, uh, so shout out to Ricky for passing me this list. Uh, this is Presence of God combo uh, with a little bit added bonus, uh, and I've thought about doing Presence of God combo before, it's just it's, it's quite bland, um, but his has got a few more dimensions to it that I really like, I think adds to not only the uh, flexibility of the deck, but also just its potential really um, I think that a lot of the presence of God lists are overly simplified and really uh, bottlenecked into that one combo whereas this gives you a bit more flexibility um, in case you get your combo shut down which a lot of times you do because it's a very vulnerable combo but let's get into what the actual presence of God combo traditionally is uh, so this revolves around Midnight Guard. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap Midnight Guard. Uh, this is obviously just built to be a combo piece. There's so many cards in Magic that have had a similar ability that have been used to create all sorts of combos. Uh, so not really a surprise here that we're going to be able to abuse it. Uh, so we're going to be using it by putting Presence of Gond on it. Uh, it gives it the ability to create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. And um, obviously we're tapping him to do that. And whenever the elf comes in, untaps him. Looky there. It's almost like it was how we drew it up. Uh, so we're going to use this to create an infinite number of elves. So that gives us a few different ways to win the game. Uh, obviously we can attack with those elves, but these elves do not have haste. So we're most likely going to be activating Midnight Card on our opponent's instep and then trying to swing in. Now, clearly there is some problems here. Uh, Electricery is a card, and at instant speed they could shut down our ability to attack, giving them another turn. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of ways that they can attack this combo. They can also just kill Midnight Guard. It dies to a Bolt and a Galvanic Blast. Um, very easy to kill off which is why we have some protection uh, they can counter either the midnight guard or the presence of gone there's a lot of vulnerability here so we'll get into how we're going to protect the combo in just a second but we'll get into the secondary combo that ricky has put in it's actually two separate combos but pretty much the same idea uh, so we're going to be using presence of gone again but this time we're going to be using it with devoted druid if you play modern you've seen a lot of this card um, i still cannot believe that this is a common it's kind of an insane card but uh, if you don't know what it does it's mana dork and it also has put a minus one minus one counter on devoted druid untapped devoted druid now how we use this in modern is cards that uh, prevent any negative one negative one counters being put on like vizier of remedies uh, but we don't have such things in pauper but we do have ways to counteract uh, it losing power and toughness essentially. Uh, the first way that we can do this is Ivy Lane Denison. So as those creatures come in, it triggers Ivy Lane Denison, and we can put a plus one plus one counter on Devoted Druid. Uh, so it gets rid of the negative one negative one counter. So we can just keep untapping a Devoted Druid, tapping it to get our um, our elves out, and then of course we 
It's just as if it never happened. Uh, the other way that we can do this is Sigil of the Nine Gods. It's another enchantment that we can put on to Devoted Druid. Uh, it's going to get plus one, plus one for each creature. So we're untapping it to create a creature by putting a minus one, minus one on it. But that creature is essentially giving it plus one, plus one once it hits the board. So the counters are still going on Devoted Druid, unlike with the Ivy Lane Denison where we're essentially erasing the counters. Um, so it'll still have, you know, five million negative one, negative one counters, depending on how many you choose to make. Uh, but you'll still have at least some power and toughness left. This is also a card that you can use to uh, go for game, uh, as well as Ivy Lane Denison. So let's say you have like the Midnight Guard combo out. Uh, you could just choose one of your creatures that are on the battlefield, go through the combo, and use Ivy Lane Denison to put a bunch of counters on them. Uh, or you can just equip, uh, well, it's not equipping, but uh, using Sigil and Nine Gods on one of your creatures and attacking with them because they'll be massive. Uh, because you're making infinite tokens. Uh, this is a way that you can attack uh, on the turn that you set the combo up, but obviously uh, you're going to be later in the game to already have a creature out with Sigil and Nine Gods out and have Midnight Guard out with Presence of Gone combo on it. So this is a late game strategy. Uh, it's mostly to facilitate this Devoted Druid combo, but it is another means of going for game in a later stage of the game. Uh, another way that we're going to try to win the game with this deck is we have one Soul Warden. Uh, whenever a creature enters a battlefield, we gain a life. Obviously, this leads to infinite life, even if they are getting rid of the counters, some the um, the elves somehow. Uh, and for most decks, that just shuts them off. Uh, then you just it's a matter of who has more cards in deck, and um, you know unless they're playing like Infect or Mill, obviously you pretty much win if you've got more cards in deck. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, it's not exactly the most exciting way to win, but it's pretty relevant, especially when most decks in Popper draw a lot of cards. We have cards like Brainstorm and Ponder. Uh, the relevant thing to remember is that Commune with the Gods does take a lot of cards off the top of your deck, so you do need to be cognizant of how many of those you've cast versus how many draw spells your opponent's cast. Remember that you can always ask your opponent how many cards are in deck, and you can always check how many cards are in your deck if you're playing Paper Magic, uh, because that is a uh, common knowledge, I believe is how it's phrased in the ruling. Um, as far as protecting the combo, uh, we'll actually talk about the Soul Warden again in just a second, but uh, the Benevolent Bodyguard, if we got four of these, it's just uh, synergizes really well with the deck. It's a creature, there's a lot of creature interaction in this deck. Uh, it synergizes with Holdout Settlement, um, and Apostle's Blessing kind of serves the same role, uh, but being an instant, it's easier to counter, uh, but it's a good surprise method. Uh, kind of weird to see Apostle's Blessing in a main board, but in this deck, all the protection possible. Think about how much targeted removal is in this format. You need it. Um, the really the edict effects is the problem which is why benevolent bodyguard actually helps out because we can sacrifice it to an edict effect as well um, as far as our mana dorks obviously devoted druid serves as a mana dork we've got uh, one lanoir elves three avacyn's pilgrim because your deck leans more on white i think in ricky's list he had an elvish mystic but this art for lanoir elves is so adorably terrible that i had to include it uh, elvish visionary we have these beautiful promo arts uh, we got four of these bad boys. Again, creature synergy and drawing cards into our combo. Pulse Marasa, that way we can get back our uh, creatures that facilitate our combo, like Devoted Druid and Midnight Guard, gain a little bit of life. Uh, and the mana base is pretty simple. We got some cycling lands, uh, Kalani Garden, because, um, again, creature ETBs and such are relevant to this deck. Uh, Ricky didn't have any snow lands in his build but I had them on MTGO you might as well play them there's no real reason not to uh, and occasionally with snow covered planes before Astrolabe you could trick them into thinking you were playing uh, Boros Monarch but that's not really a thing anymore because thankfully that card is gone uh, looking at our side deck we have one souls attendant I would like to see this in the main board uh, but Ricky and I have kind of gone back and forth on that uh, but we'll see how it goes uh, we're playing a Soul's Attendant over another Soul Warden, so we have a different name. Uh, 
echoing decay and uh, echoing truth and whatnot. Uh, Journey to Nowhere, pretty standard for a white deck. We have uh, Oblivion Rings, that way we have uh, a little bit different. The black Oblivion Ring, uh, it starts with an O. Uh, that way we can get rid of this because uh, that deck, Mono Black, has become pretty prevalent. Uh, and that's one of the ways that they will try to remove your creatures from the combo. And obviously Journey to Nowhere does not handle that. And it's just a good all-around removal. Uh, we got a couple standard bearers. I actually have a little anecdote about standard bearers that we might get into later. Uh, prismatic strands for some more protection, uh, especially against aggro decks. We can just call red or uh, green, depending on which one I'm going up against. Spider Silk Armor is a great card. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Electricery is a problem, so you can bring this in if you see it in game one, potentially. Or uh, I see it more as a game three card, but if you want to bring this in against elves, potentially, uh, if, well, I mean, not elves, um, fairies, uh, to keep them from getting through, that way we can block them uh, because we'll have reach. And Weather the Storm, this is just like the best answer to burn, really, and um, just synergize as well with this deck because we do have a lot of like small creatures, so if we need to utilize our own storm count, generally we can uh, generate a decent one. So that's the basics of the deck. Uh, I think you'll see a little bit better once we get into playing it. I have had a nightmare process of making this video because I I told Dan that I was going to get it to him like a week ago, but so many things have come up. I've had so many problems with my recording software. Uh, I'm using OBS for the first time, so a little bit of a learning curve. I'm terrible with technology, so uh, we're 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 going to get there one way or the other, uh, but. The stack, getting a video with this deck has been a nightmare, but we have my good friend uh, David, who is online right now, who is going to help us get a couple games in, and hopefully one of them will be good enough to feature. And I'll see you guys over there. Alright, we're going to be getting started here against David, uh, so thank you to him for helping me get some games in. It's been kind of difficult getting games with this deck. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. We're going to take a mulligan here. I'm not super excited about this hand, but I think it's keepable. I think we put back Apostle's Blessing. I can go on second. Maybe we could have kept the first hand, but that was just too risky. Kyrian Ranger. Okay. Yeah, David didn't tell me what he was bringing. Not not too excited about it being elves. Well, actually, no. I bet this is his um, green red aggro. We'll see. Take one here. Not too bad. Turn my volume down again. MTGO is just so loud. Like I always forget whenever I'm recording to turn it down. Yeah, this is like or mono green aggro is what it looks like. It's another deck that I want to feature. I've actually been playing a lot with it recently. And we've got nothing to work with here. Need a white source desperately. But yeah, this deck is... The problem is, and this is the nature of a lot of combo decks, is you either go off and it's one-sided in your favor or your opponent just disrupts your combo and it's one-sided in their favor and I don't mind losing I've featured plenty of matches where I've lost um, as far as like showing you guys a loss um, the the issue is that I want to make sure well there's a tapped white source um, the issue is that I want to make sure that it's a video that I think demonstrates the the deck well and what I mean by that is that you guys walk away from it being able to say oh yeah I understand how the deck works and it's also you know just an entertaining watch and a lot of the games that I've been getting recently I just don't feel like accomplish that uh, so I've I end up just being like okay well let's try another um, another game or what have you and um, just leads to it being slightly frustrating, I think would be the best way to describe it. We're going to take a lot of damage here. Go to two. 
if we get another untapped white source that's not an untapped white source so I think the depending on blockers so we'll play the soul warden yeah we can only play either the bodyguard or the devoted druid um, I guess we play the bodyguard because this would allow us to oh yeah well we'd have to tap for that uh, well we'd have to tap our soul warden so that's another blocker that we couldn't have um, going into sideboarding can talk about our um, one-sided games uh, so let's I think the prismatic strands for a longer game are good early game they're gonna be kinda of difficult his deck is just extremely fast another souls attendant seems good I mean like I said in the in the intro I think it's just good in general um, I don't foresee targeted removal being an issue I don't I I don't think it would be an issue at all honestly the bodyguards are still relevant because um, of our interaction with trample I'll elaborate on that in a second uh, I want to make sure that we get the sideboard taken care of uh, I don't want to take out any of our mana dorks because we're going to have to outrace them in this matchup could go down an ivy lane just because it late game combos are not really what I'm planning on us getting into in this matchup. I don't think we're going to do late game anything. It's either going to be we go off and win or we lose to a ton of big creatures. Let's go down a visionary. Uh, I don't want to go down too many creatures just because blockers are pretty relevant here. Uh, but what I meant by the interaction with Trample so if you declare blockers with trample uh, and they obviously if you block damage is going to go over top of you this is questionable but I think it works we actually have a full combo in hand it's just going to be awkward to play into it um, but so if you for them to get the damage from trample going over top of you they actually have to deal damage to you so if we block and sacrifice our um, our creature like benevolent bodyguard we can we can sacrifice it at any time uh, as long as we've got another creature that we control to target uh, and so that would completely uh, save us from that damage you can do that in a situation where like um, if you're playing against keeping it in, in pauper terms uh, affinity and you've got an atog swinging at you that has um, a team or battle rage going on I, don't want, I was about to say attached to it uh, not exactly how it works um, if they've targeted with team or battle rage obviously you don't want to take that hit if you've got something that you can sacrifice, like a Benevolent Bodyguard, you can use that as a blocker. Uh, sacrifice it before damage, and they don't get any damage off on you. Um, not a whole lot of decks really have the ability to do that. Affinity is actually one where you can do that in the mirror, because you can block with a Frog Might and sacrifice your Frog Might to your own um, a Tog during your... Uh, before damage. So let's bounce this holdout settlement. I think Ricky didn't have holdout settlement. He had another land that is functionally the same that I can't remember the name of. Uh, but I had the holdout settlements in my inventory and didn't have the other ones in my inventory, so we're using holdout settlement. It's always weird for newer players especially because you know they see a list and they're like okay I want to use it and then they don't realize you know and no fault of their own they don't really realize that you know you have cards like that that are functionally the same but 
um, you know, they think that, like, oh, I have to go out and get an Elvish Mystic. Well, no, if you already have a Lanoir Elves in your in your box, just use that. Uh, I think that, like, throws some newer players off. I don't know. Getting into magic is so weird. I actually, um, I went on a date a couple nights ago. We went to dinner. Dinner goes well. Uh... And we leave, and she's telling me that she's going to run a few errands before she goes home. We did bring in targeted removal. Okay. Alright. I did not think about gut shot. I don't know how I feel about it in this matchup. I mean, Devoted Druid lives it. Pretty much all the combo pieces live it. I mean, it kills off the Benevolent Bodyguards, but then, like, what are you... What targeted removal do you have to hit the the rest of the combo with that you need to get rid of the Bodyguards? I mean, like, it, it gets rid of some of the Mana Dorks, but... I don't know, I, I kind of question that. I might ask him about that afterwards, what his thought process on that was. Uh, but so she tells me she's going to go run a few errands, and she asked me what I was doing. And I had mentioned to her that I was a card gamer, and she thought that was interesting. Uh, and um, so she, I told her I'm going to go meet some friends at the shop, uh, my LGS, and she wanted to come along. And so I invited her along, and we ended up, I figured she might just, you know, sit there and hang out. But she immediately wanted to learn to play and so we ended up uh, myself and David actually the person that we were playing currently ended up teaching her how to play magic and it was a pretty cool situation there so fellas if you're ever worried about you know telling a, uh, a female in your life that you play magic apparently it can go over all right I very much wish that we could get Devoted Druid to cast Presence of Gone this turn, but we cannot actually pay, we can't put enough counters on it to do that, which is unfortunate. But we do have the Sigil on it, it's a more competent blocker at this point. I guess playing the, so the reason why I didn't play the Presence of Gone first because you might question that play. Um, reason being that the Presence of Gond is a universal combo piece. What I mean by that is, let's say he kills the Devoted Druid this turn, and I lose the Sigil, obviously. Uh, the Sigil does not interact with Midnight Guard's combo necessarily, uh, whereas Presence of Gond does. So I'd rather lose the side combo piece than the primary, is the thought process there. Just want to clarify that in case anybody had any questions on that. Um, I think we just go for it. I probably should have uh, tapped differently there, but I wanted to have white mana potentially open. So, I guess we'll see what David wants to do here. I mean, obviously, like, he can still answer this combo. Do we need to play anything else? I don't think so. So we'll just pass turn. And obviously we can do this during his turn. The, the cool thing about the Devoted Druid side of this combo, uh, Midnight Guard has to trigger so the elf needs to hit the board. So when you tap Midnight Guard, they can respond to it and he's vulnerable at that point. Uh, and that can end your combo sequence. Whereas Devoted Druid, uh, depending on how much uh, toughness she has at that point, you can always just put a negative one counter on it, untap, and then continue your combo before their piece of removal resolves. So in that way, she is a far superior combo piece 
to Midnight Guard uh, just takes you longer to get to that combo. So let's... I can't imagine how he answers this in mono green. And I'm pretty sure David's familiar with this combo because he, Ricky, and I all play together. So I'm going to make the assumption that he has an answer and play as though he does. The unfortunate thing is that on MTGO the tapping for Midnight Guard is a much faster combo to click through. So we need four to block the that dude, the one with Bloodlust and Trample currently. Uh, two to block this, and two to block the Metal Sentinel. David better have an answer to this, and he's not just making me click through this for no reason. Okay, he makes me tap that long. Okay, way to go, David. But, yeah, so that is the combo working as intended there. I don't really feel the need to change our sideboard plan. I think that the gut shot was fine. Like, I, I again, I, I question bringing that in. Uh, it does hit our little um, mana dorks which makes me consider siding some of them out simply because like you know uh, otherwise what is he going to spend the gut shot on well the soul wardens yeah and the other soul warden soul's attendant there we go that's it um I think we just keep it the same, right? Like, it, you could definitely make the argument for siding out some of the mana dorks, but if anything, him gut shotting the mana dork is like a good bait play because then we can more safely bring in Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant. Speak of the devil. We got a combo piece. We've got lands, we've got life gain and recursion. Let's keep this. This is a deck that's very, um, it's kind of scary to mulligan too far with it. You've got a lot of three drop combo pieces. see how it goes. I am kind of nervous about starting with Soul's Attendant. Speaking of which, let's just go ahead and start with Landwar Elves. If he answers this with a um, with a gut shot, it is what it is. Um, we can pulse a Marasa back if we really need to, but I don't really foresee that. I mean, don't get me wrong, losing out on a mana dork is pretty, you know, nobody wants to, uh, but as far as how this deck really functions, I think that the curve manages itself well enough without actually needing the mana dorks in some matchups. And obviously, the more mana you have, the better, but... Um, you know, I think the deck can do it without it. Now, granted, we are in a very aggressive matchup. But the Soul's Attendant uh, very nicely is going to start gaining us some life. And luckily, we don't have to really worry about River Boa um, doing much for our opponent in this matchup besides being able to regenerate, but not really planning on killing it anytime soon. Uh, so we can cycle those Ash Barons. Let's go ahead and play the Blossoming Sands. And I think we just have to pass. I mean, it's good that we have two Presence of Gons in hand. I would just also like to have something that I can uh, attach it to. 
to be fair, I have put a presence of God on a soul's attendant or a soul warden before in a very serious act of desperation and was just gaining one life a turn and having a blocker every turn. And honestly, it managed to stall me out until I got to my combo. So, you know, what can I say? It work if it works, it works. Uh, so we'll always yield. I keep forgetting to do it first so that I can um, make it to always, yes. I can't really think of a situation in Popper where I would not want to gain the life. Savage swipe. I didn't think about that. That is, I guess, technically targeted removal. And pretty relevant. Yeah, I should have thought about that in terms of removal. I still think that it's... that taking out the Apostle's Blessing is the right play. Just because, like... You know, it's a very niche thing to answer, whereas our Benevolent Bodyguards pretty comfortably handle that role. Uh, we'll just go ahead and cycle Ash Barons. I mean, we're not really trying to bluff anything at this point. Uh, we'll get ourselves a Snow-Covered Plains. Because it's foil. Uh, and also, you know, we have, you know, two green sources already. We can get back Soul's Attendant with Pulse. And I'm kind of tempted to do that. Mostly because we just don't have any action. I think that's a dumb play. I feel like I will end up regretting that. Now, if he drops like five creatures this turn, I'm going to regret not having a soul attendant out to grab some of that. Choose not to attack with the boa. I think that's a smart choice. We'll take the two here. My thought process behind keeping the two, well, I mean, uh, taking the two, is that I want to keep the land where elves. It does seem like we're kind of like at a point of excessive mana, but we drop a land next turn. That gives us access to six mana, and from there we can, um, let's say we draw a Midnight Guard, we can play Midnight Guard, play Presence of God on the same turn. That is not a Midnight Guard, but it can be. Commune here. That is a Midnight Guard. There's really no way that we can have any more protection than the Benevolent Bodyguard. I'll just leave open the Llanowar Elves if we really need a blocker. We got two presence of gods in case he has like a I don't know naturalize or something like that. I wouldn't bring that in in this matchup, but just trying to you know I I'm one of those players, and this is the reason why I often go into time is because I I think about like every possible option, even though some of them are literally not possible. <laughs> Let's just let the damage through. I mean it's. 6 damage, puts us to 11, but we have life gain, and I'd just rather not risk, I mean, obviously we could block the river boa, but, you know, then I, we open ourselves up to a gut shot. Alright, so we have a kill this turn. So what we do here is we tap these play presence of God onto midnight guard and then we have to put this on yeah we can put it on the midnight guard we'll just do the tappity tap tap with him um, and once he taps for all of those wonderful elves 
he can now get incredibly big. So I'll show you kind of how you can make this go by pretty quickly. As long as you do the yield there, uh, you'll very quickly get to um, just tap and tap. I was very worried whenever I set out to make a video on this deck that this would be an incredibly time-consuming combo to play out. And as you guys know, I am uh, infamous for timing out during uh, these during these matches because I am uh, I'm admittedly a slow player because I really overthink things um, but I I think we're just gonna make some extras because he might be trying to cheese me out with like a weather the storm or something yeah, but as you can see the sigil of the Nyan gods does come in handy outside of being just a straight combo piece uh, obviously like we could pretty handily set up a a, a win just based on what we had uh, but now being able to kill on this turn instead of having to wait until next turn uh, pretty solid way to play the game I think uh, so unless he's playing some flash creature that I'm not aware of we should be good and that is game so we'll reveal hand in case David wants to see that. Um, yeah, that that's really how the stack is supposed to function. Uh, it's not exactly high art, um, I guess you could say. Like it's it's a it's a very straightforward, simple deck. I don't I don't want to make it sound as though this is brainless because it's not. There's a lot of lines of play that you should keep in mind. Um, but Overall, uh, the deck is a bit linear, and that's probably my biggest complaint with it. Otherwise, I really enjoy this deck. I really enjoy Ricky's build in particular. Uh, as far as some changes that I would like to make, I would like to bring that Souls Attendant into the main board. Uh, we could even drop like maybe one of the Avacyn's Pilgrims. Um, I'd also like to just make that Ash Barrens 2. Uh, it just feels a bit clunky with the amount of basics that we play uh, and maybe just put in a basic in place of it um, and then I think the sideboard needs some adjustment because I'd like to see some enchantment and artifact removal in there uh, because that's sorely lacking right now uh, the closest thing you have is the oblivion ring which that that, that doesn't even count really um, but the uh, that that's the adjustment that I would like to see. You have several options for that, just kind of your preference. But um, yeah, I think you guys should try this deck out. It's uh, even on MTGO, it is uh, quite cheap, even for a popper deck. Outside of like the prismatic strands and the standard bearers, but obviously, like you could go without those. But if you play a lot of popper on MTGO, you probably already have them. So why not try this deck out? It's a lot of fun. Uh, when it works, it can be a little frustrating when it doesn't. Uh, but as far as what we have in the works for uh, future videos, I actually Monocreen Aggro is uh, on the list. I have it built here. Uh, David is giving us a little pr uh, little preview. I think our lists are a bit different, but um, overall pretty much similar. So I would like to make a video with this deck. If you guys want to see a video with this deck, let me know. If you guys want to see more videos with the Presence of Gone combo, please do let me know. Uh, I would love to feature it some more. Again, thank you to Ricky for uh, letting me use it in this video. And thank you to David for playing against me in this video. It was uh, pretty cool. And I will see you guys in future videos. If you guys want to follow me on Facebook, Twitter... I don't really use my Facebook page that much anymore, but uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter. And of course, come back and see me because I will be hopefully posting more videos here soon. So I look forward to seeing you guys later. Bye.